Welcome to this episode of the State of Mirrorless. We are on a sort of a Canada month at this time of the year. We had Eric Cote from Quebec, mm -hmm. uh, and then we had Otman Kama from who was from originally from Canada. He recently moved to the warmer climate of California, the San Francisco Bay Area. Today we have Victor Elizarov from Montreal, freezing Montreal. <laughs> Probably, I would say, is that right? Oh yeah, it's minus twenty. Minus twenty Celsius. Yeah. Yeah, just to put things in perspective, that's pretty cold. I'm not <laughs> going to translate that to, to Fahrenheit, but it's uh, it's very cold. Uh, how are you? Aside from uh, I'm pretty uh, good. Good, good, good. How is the weather? It looks like it's sunny outside. Yeah, at least it's sunny, you know. Like so, but still, I don't go outside to shoot anything, you know. Like it's too cold. <laughs> so you're you're a you're a photographer based in uh, in Montreal, as I said. Um, you're mainly a landscape photographer. Correct me if I'm wrong. Can you tell us a bit about your your life history? If your photography, what part of your life photography plays? Is that your full time occupation? Is that a part time a hobby? Just let us know a bit about your how you grew your passion for photography. Sure. Uh, I'm original from USSR, so my native uh, language is Russian. So when I was in uh, high school, I had the uh, really cheap plastic uh, uh, rangefinder, you know, like, and I had the dark room uh, in my parents' like bathroom, so it was fun. And at, this, at, the, ta uh, this, uh, at the time, my uncle, he was event photographer, but he lived in different cities, so I didn't see him a lot. So when I finished high school, he invited me to visit him to teach me the trade. So uh, I spent um, six, seven weeks with my uncle, like following him everywhere, you know, like learning, you know, like the way he worked, you know, like as a photographer, as a business. And I realized that like 60% of time he spent in, in the dark room, not shooting, uh, taking pictures, but in the dark room. And I hated it. So, and I gave up on the idea, like, on, like, following my, like, photography, you know, like, so I gave up. So then, you know, like, uh, years later, I became a graphic designer. I moved to Canada. And at some point, I realized that, like, my primary tool of, like, Photoshop is a darkroom, basically, and I love it. So this was kind of, like, trigger, you know, like, 10, 12 years ago, you know, so I said, oh, finally I can have fun in the darkroom. So I bought my first uh, camera then. What did you didn't like about the, the dark room? Was that the, the chemicals? Was that the messy process? It was a I don't know. Like slow... everything, just to be in dark room, also you know, like and and the chemicals and the smell and you know, like unpredictable nature, you know, like of dark room. So it's kind of uh, ruined for me, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you would rather spend 60% of your time in front of a computer now than... No, no, no problem, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that's fine, that's fine. I mean, I, I love uh, post-processing too. And, uh, <laughs> and you are um, big on post-processing, right? I mean, with your background as a graphic designer, you are looking at your picture. You are a master of uh, getting the most out of, uh, of images. If oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I really like it. I think this is like the real potential is there, you know, like, so you capture as uh, much information as possible from the scene. And, and then, you know, like, if you have vision or you don't have vision, you can decide it later, you know, like in post processing, you can uh, try different tools, uh, different approaches, you know, like to come with like completely different results, you know, like, so I really like this uh, aspect uh, of photography. Uh, is it, isn't it a bit uh, like shooting without caring too much and then say, okay, I will fix it in Photoshop? I mean, some, some people uh, think that's somehow a bad thing. What, what do you say about that? No, no, 
you see, uh, before taking like interesting shot or like interesting location, I always trying uh, to have like a vision, try to have a plan, what I want to achieve. But in most of the cases, it just doesn't work. So in this case, you know, like I, I can try something different, you know, like in post processing, you know, like and sometimes it takes, you know, like years to process for, you know, like so you reject it. Oh, come on, I don't like it. So it's there's no potential. And then, you know, like uh, you can you have like some ideas. So I like this like aspect. Uh, would you say that you envision much of your final result when you're on in the field shooting? I think uh, it comes with experience, you know, like more you shoot, you know, like more your uh, you can predict, you know, like uh, before you take in shot, you know, like even, you know, like sometimes I, I see the scene, you know, like I know, okay, I'm going to use, uh, I don't know, like photomatics or uh, only Photoshop, single exposure, or I want to do something different, you know, like even before taking shot, I know how I would, I'm going to process it, you know, like so. It's, I think it's all experience. Yeah, I guess so. Um, so our show is pretty much about uh, gear, about equipment. This is mm -hmm. the state of mirrorless. We are interviewing uh, you and we interviewed other photographers because they uh, they started using mirrorless systems or they switched from a DSLR or other kind of camera to, to a mirrorless camera. So c can you tell us a bit about your progress your in in this sense you you switch it from a canon based system to a mirrorless camera what did you use to shoot with and what do you shoot with now uh, so it, it, um, 10 years ago you know like i started with like canon and again it was like complete accident you know like so i spent like i don't know, like a few days few weeks you know like uh, on the forums trying to figure out what to buy and it was like confusing, you know, like uh, Nikon or like Canon or something else, you know, like I was lucky I had like a friend who was a photographer at that time. And he told me, you know, like, do not worry about equipment, buy uh, Digital Rebel and learn how to use it. So that's it. And it saved me so much time, you know, like, so I bought Rebel and I became a Canon user, you know, like, and so over years I, uh, I had like, 20D, 60D, uh, I tried uh, full frame uh, 5D, but I kind of like 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 crop sensor, you know, like, and I stick to 60D. For a long time, I used like, for the last three years, I, I used 60D. And um, two months ago, I switched completely to mirrorless, to Sony. And um, <laughs> it's, it's an interesting story, you know. Yeah, I was, I was reading your blog, you have a... So your, your website, by the way, phototraces.com, and there is an interesting guy. I would recommend everybody who wants to learn about your, your story to, to read this blog post. I'm going to put it up on the, on the screen for a, for a second. It's called Top Reason Why I Switched from, from Canon to Sony. So, yeah, t tell us a bit more about why Sony in particular. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, like this tiny camera, you know, like it's a, a Lumix LX7, but originally I had a Lumix LX3, you know, like it was like a Trojan horse, you know, like of like the reason I switched to mirrorless, you know, like so uh, I was kind of like tired, like carrying like uh, equipment and I wanted like a good point and shoot, you know, like for, I don't know, like family or whatever, like short trips, you know. And I bought, like, uh, uh, mirrorless did not exist at that time, you know? So I bought uh, Lumix LX3, you know, like, and it was completely amazing, you know? Like, so this, like, LX7, you know, this probably, like, the best uh, point and shoot, you know, like, ever made, you know? Like, like $300, like a lens, 1.4. Can you imagine? 24 millimeters, you know? Like, it's wide, incredibly fast. So with, like, 300 camera, you know, like, I have, like, 1.4. Uh, at ISO 4500 and extremely usable uh, stabilizer. So it's kind of like I can shoot in dark. Mm -hmm. So, and this like when I realized, you know, like, like I want something smaller, faster and like with like 
there's like more innovation, you know, like I expected, for, uh, waited for innovation from Canon for a long time and I didn't see it. So I, I started, you know, like to search, started to follow up like mirrorless, you know, like, and um, I thought, you know, like initially, you know, like my mirrorless system uh, would be uh, Panasonic Lumix, you know, like uh, I really liked uh, GX7, you know, like. I really love design. Uh, I really love like uh, uh, mm, rangefinder style body, you know, like plus all this functionality, like uh, wireless connectivity, you know, like bracketing, GPS tagging through your phone, you know, like all this like cool stuff. But you know, like I wasn't happy with like wide uh, lens, you know, like so I I couldn't switch, you know, like like a year ago probably so. And um, then, you know, like, uh, I thought about uh, uh, Fuji. Uh, and uh, X-T1, you know, like, uh, it's a beautiful camera, you know, like, and the controls are amazing, you know, like, but, you know, like, what was X this? X-T1 plus uh, 10.24, which it's an amazing lens. It's kind of big and heavy, you know, like, so, and this is the reason, you know, like, uh, when um, uh, Sony came up with uh, eight, uh, 6,000, you know, like, it was like kind of logical choice for me, you know, so. So, so now you're, you're using the A6000. Yeah. yeah. But also at the same time, you know, like, uh, before switching, I didn't want to use any, uh, converters, you know, like like Canon lens, Nikon, you know, like Nikon, whatever, you know, like so. I, I waited until I could buy like native lens, you know, like so I have native kit and I don't have to worry about anything, you know, like so. I went uh, with uh, Sony 6000 plus uh, Sony uh, 1018 f4 and uh, Zeiss uh, 1670 f4. So I have like native kit and so I'm learning to use it, you know, like. So this is your basic uh, kit when you, when you go out shooting, you have that camera and two lenses. Yeah. You would say that. Do you have any primes? Uh, not really. Uh, yeah. no. Extra weighted, you know, like I, I, I like rarely, like uh, rarely use them, you know, like so. I mean, that uh, makes sense, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, you said that Sony gave you the innovation that Canon was not giving you. Uh, what particular features uh, do you consider innovative in this kind of cameras? <laughs> you know, like a mm, uh, like couple of days ago, I read like a uh, review of like uh, uh, new Canon um, uh, 7D Mark II. It's a revolutionary new features. They went from seven frames per second to 10. Revolutionary feature. <laughs> this tiny one, it's 11, you know, like, and fraction of the price, and it's like first model in this line, you know, like, so <laughs> I'm just comparing like innovation, you know, like, so, and I mentioned like Fuji before, I mentioned uh, Lumix, Panasonic, and Sony, they all trying, you know, like something new, something exciting, and I don't see it in Canon, you know. And does the, the, the Sony give you something, afford you something particularly beneficial uh, in terms of thinking about the post-processing that you do later? So you do a lot of HDR, if I understand. So you use bracketing and, and so on and being able also to maybe to uh, using an electronic viewfinder, being able to, to preview uh, your actual exposure. I mean, what what... What would you say that the this technology affords you uh, with respect to your post-processing workflow? You know, like, I'm a computer guy, you know, like, I spend my, like, all my, like, uh, life in front of a computer, you know, like, I love computers, I understand computers, my friends, and, and this is the reason I hated, like, um, uh, optical viewfinder. 
it's uh, you see one thing you know like but you get completely different and you have to predict you know like so you spend like years you know like trying to predict you know like now evf i think it's a, for me it's a, like best feature you know like in mirrorless so it gives me you know like i can see what uh, sensor can see you know like. mm -hmm. so when i shoot at uh, wide uh, like a 10 millimeters you know like i can even see like barrel distortion i like it you know like. It's, it's exactly, you know, like, I know what I'm going to get, you know, like, before even taking the shot. So I love it. And plus, you know, like, uh, focus picking, it's it just, it's a killer. Mm -hmm. And is there anything that you miss from DSLR days? Uh, maturity. Because mm -hmm. it's a still brand new, you know, like, system, you know, like, because uh, this, uh, this Canon, it's a, uh, I I didn't like a lot of stuff in it, but it was a mature system, you know, like, so, like, small stuff, like, um, startup time, you know, like, and so it's not awful, you know, like, it's less than a second, but still, you know, like, in uh, Canon, it's instantaneous, you know, like, and, like, like, battery life. You can shoot, like, I don't know, like, 350 shots with, like, uh, Sony, but it's not 1500, like, with uh, Canon, you know, like, so, so... I think like a couple of years it takes, you know, like, to, for the system to be mature. Yeah, I can relate to, to that battery life fact. I'm actually traveling to, to London tomorrow and with my XC2 and I'm wondering whether I should take uh, one, two or three or f extra batteries just in case. So you <laughs> one, see, one, day, one will not carry me through the day. I know that. But you I, see, I it's not a problem, you know, like, they, like batteries are tiny. You can put them in the pocket. That problem for me, you know, like, to charge them. It takes like like three hours to charge each one. So when I'm dead tired of like hiking, you know, like uh, in in like mountains, you know, like I don't have nine hours, you know, like every like three hours to change like uh, 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 like battery, you know, like, in the charger. So <laughs> yeah, that that's a bit that's a bit annoying. Um, uh, you, you mentioned hiking and mountains, so you are uh, very much an outdoors type of guy. You do a lot of uh, hiking and uh, going to, to wilderness and places where national parks. What, what, what do you like to shoot most? Uh, you know, like my photography from the beginning was driven by, um, by design, by graphic design, you know, like, so... Um, I um, look for like sometimes for like combination of colors, like maybe even some um, interesting element, you know, like for for no reason, you know, just because it's, it looks nice. So, and I started like uh, this architecture and landscapes. This is my two main uh, areas, you know, like a photography, you know, like I really like. So, and, and you do travel a lot. Yeah, I'm trying, you know, like to travel, you know, like, yeah. So, can you maybe uh, talk us, uh, tell us about some of your recent trips uh, and maybe show some photos from those places? Yeah, sure. Uh, you know, like, uh, like three years ago, we uh, went to Italy. We stay in like Trieste, in like Venice, you know, like, and it was kind of like rediscovering uh, like Europe again, you know, because we left like 20 years ago and it's first time we went back. And we had like big plans, you know, like for like uh, to rediscover Europe again, you know. Like. But then, you know, like uh, we went to California, you know, to, to Southwest, you know, like in the last three years, you know, like I spent like traveling to California and Southwest, you know, like, so I forget about Europe, you know, like. <laughs> So I would say, you know, like um, Arizona, Utah, Nevada, it's just, it's incredible, you know, like it's just incredible as a nature, you know, like so this is probably um, most exciting like trip, you know, like I had like last year when I um, I drove for like kind of like two weeks almost from uh, Phoenix, Arizona to Utah through all the canyons, Grand Canyon, Bryce, um, then to Nevada, Las Vegas, and I finished in uh california in uh, yosemite so that was that's amazing you know like and what's most amazing you know like so during the day you can see like 
canyons, snow, desert, but 30, zero degrees one day. So it's... Did, did, did you take this trip with your family? Uh, I traveled with my wife, yeah. Okay, so does she does, does she like to, to come along to wait in a, in a location until uh, you find the right light, the right moment, and is, is she <laughs> patient with you or, or is she impatient and she, oh, we need to go to the hotel to have dinner at the restaurant. <laughs> we've, we've been out all day shooting, you know, can you balance that? <laughs> it took some time, you know, like, so just... Like photography uh, make me look at like nature, you know, like at, like environment differently, you know. Like I always trying to find something interesting, you know, like so. And it took me some time to teach my wife it. And now sometimes, you know, like I'm sitting working, and she calls me from work, and, and she's like screaming, "Take your camera, go outside! It's beautiful clouds outside!" Mm -hmm. You know, like so. <laughs> but it took some time, you know, like a few years, you know. Uh, so, so do you want, maybe want to share some some yeah. pictures so we can talk so, about a bit? Yeah. Can you see it? Yep. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. So it's uh, this from uh, California, from like Big Sur. It's probably like one of the most like beautiful like spot like in. Uh, I've ever seen, you know, like in my life, and you know, like last year, um, California had uh, like worst drought in uh, like California history, probably, you know, like so it's uh, January, you know, like and like everything is like burned out, you know, like there's no grass, nothing, but you know, like it, it was like awful for people, you know, like, but it's beautiful, it makes beautiful photography, you know, like so and. So uh, just just tell me something about that that picture. Is was that taken with the with the Sony? No, no, no. It, 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 was, it was taken. Uh, um, it was taken with uh, Canon. Okay. And you know, like for this uh, particular shot, it was like I could see from the beginning. You know, like light was pretty dynamic. You know, like I had to, uh, I had to go for HDR. So I. <laughs> To my true, you know, like I, uh, um, I took five bracketed shots, but then you know, like I took like longer exposures, so I could like compose it like nice water later, you know, like so. Um, but for for people who might be new to HDR techniques and so on, what I when I see a picture like that, and you say it was like five exposures. <laughs> Um, isn't uh, moving water or moving clouds a problem? How do you deal with that in post-processing? If you can maybe give us some tips. Uh, you know, like, there are like, different uh, tricks, you know, like uh, to deal with it. But, um, okay, this photo is a good, good example. This one uh, was taken like a couple of weeks ago with, like, with, with Sony, you know? So again, you know, like I was going for HDR, but you're right, you know, like I have like uh, like uh, grass, trees, you know, like palms, you know, like it's uh, it was windy, everything was moving. So I took uh, bracketed shots, you know, like uh, then, you know, like uh, I took long exposure on just single shot, you know, like so I can get like nice uh, uh, silky water, you know, like mm -hmm. and. From this shot, I use only water, you know, like in Photoshop, you know, like I, I took like uh, uh, a uh, like few shots for HDR and plus I composited like water from different shots, you know, like so. Okay. So you, you did some you did some HDR automated and then you manually blended, blended in the water. Yeah, that's right, yeah. That, 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 that explains the... Yeah. Let's go, where, where, where was this taken? Was in a wife? No, no, this one again, it's California, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, interesting story behind the shot, you know, like, uh, uh, it's, it's a famous spot, you know, like in uh, Big Sur, you know, like in this coastal drive, you know, and um, I, when I uh, started to shoot, you know, like, uh, maybe like a group of like 12 photographer, photographers came, you know, like, there's like huge gear, you know, like big tripods and, you know, like uh, big backpacks, you know, like I'm starting to like pack. And I was with tiny, tiny Sony, you know, like, so uh, felt good, you know, like, 
felt really good, you know. Yeah, I had a similar experience when I was in the Canyonlands National Park. I was shooting at Mesa Arch. More like all those people with tripods and uh, big cameras, and I was there with my tiny XC2, and mostly I was using the. I didn't have the 1024 at the time yet. I mostly used my 35 millimeter primer lens, so it was really compact equipment. <laughs> I got some good shots anyway. Mm-hmm. This is another shot. It's uh, from my last trip. You know, like again, it's uh, Sony. So I, I took it this like uh, a ten millimeters wide, and um, in this case, you know, like uh, I didn't use like uh, HDR. I used like digital blending. You know, so mm-hmm. I took like, three exposures, but I blended blended like three shots in uh, Photoshop. You know, like so using masks. You know, so. Yeah, um, I think this is a great use of a wide angle lens, man. It's to exaggerate the perspective and lead the viewer into the picture with the use of leading lines and yeah. so on. So it's, uh, All these lines, they, they lead to like a beautiful Golden Gate Bridge, yeah. So. Yeah, exactly. Great, great composition there. Do you, do you spend a lot of time post processing, like in a, in a picture like that? How, how much time did you, did post processing take? Uh, it, it's hard to tell. It depends, you know. Like it, you know, like um, uh, sometimes, you know, like I have to combine two techniques, you know. Like so, for example, uh, I use a lot of uh, for HDR photomatics, you know, like but photomatics doesn't do good like uh, sky, for example, blue colors, you know. Like sometimes, you know, like, so sometimes I have to blend the uh, images in photomatics, then use, you know, like. Uh, Maybe Photoshop HDR Pro for like uh, to combine uh, like uh, another images, you know, like only for the sky, and then you put everything together in Photoshop. So to answer, it takes between like I don't know, like twenty minutes up to like one hour, you know. Mm-hmm. Not, not much. I mean, oh. well, you, you you are very good at this, so you're probably faster than the normal mortal human. I, I would probably take 10 hours to, to do a, a job like that and, and not be able to, to do it as good as well as you do. I'm not, I'm not an expert. On, uh, but you know, like, I, I, I can uh, teach you the trick, you know, like, uh, you know, like, when uh, I started with, uh, like, uh, photography, you know, like, 100% of my processing was done in Photoshop. Lightroom did not exist then, you know, like, but now, like, 90% of my processing uh, is in, done in Lightroom. And only, you know, like, uh, final touches, final blending, you know, like I do in uh, Photoshop, you know, so it says a lot of time, you know, like, Lightroom is much faster, you know, like, and uh, easier to learn. Yeah, agreed. I, I find the same, exactly. I mean, uh, I love Lightroom when I was, uh, because I, I, I never learned Photoshop properly, I was never really doing good post-processing. Then I started using Lightroom with the first versions, and then it became became more and more powerful with each version. Yeah. Now I can maybe get decent results just out of Lightroom alone, which I would ne- have never been able to get because I never took the time to, to properly learn how to use Photoshop, sure. Yeah, and uh, this one is typical HDR shot, you know, like, so I shot directly into the sun, you know, like, so I took nine exposures, you know, like, and it took a long, long time to process, you know, because, like, combination of sun and uh, blue sky, so it was really hard in, uh, to fix it in photomatics, and I had to do, like, some manual blending, and, and on and on and on, so it took a long time, this one. It's co- complex processing. And plus, like, moving, uh, a bunch of moving objects, you know, like, so. Yeah. All those uh, reeds would be moving. Yeah. Uh, this was nine, you, you said this was nine exposures. Is, does the, the Sony uh, give you, how many bracketed, auto-bracketed shots does it, does it give you? Do you do manual bracketing, you know, in a case like that? Yeah, I have to do manual bracketing, you know, like, um, uh, and are you like a, were you like a Canon shooter or not? 
No, I'm uh, Fuji at the moment. No. I used to be Nikon. Now I'm, no, Canon, I'm not... Fuji, and I have. I'm limited to, for some unfathomable reason. I I don't understand why manufacturers like Fuji cannot give us more than three shots with plus minus one of exposure. I mean, it's it's just software. I mean, it's not like that the camera has to have some special hardware to take two or four more brackets and do more than plus one minus one. The, the camera even has a, a dial to do plus three minus three of exposure compensation and yeah. that just triggers some some function in, in, the, in the firmware that does that. So what's the problem with just putting it on a menu and saying, okay, I want to take seven shots at plus three minus three? It, it should be trivial. I don't know why. It's, it's there. Are you familiar with the Magic Lantern project? Uh, I I know I never use Canon, but I know what, yeah I know what it is. Yeah, so it's exactly you know like one of the reasons it took me a long time to switch uh, from uh, Canon because of Magic Lantern and it has nothing to do with Canon, you know. Mm -hmm. So basically, you know, like it's uh, software you load from your S uh, SD card on top of like Canon uh, firmware, and you get like uh, I don't know like. Uh, new menu with maybe like 300, 500 new functionalities, you know, you can do whatever you want, you know, like, and so, you know, like uh, nine bracketed shots, you know, like you can control absolutely every aspect of, you know, like photography, you know, like so. And then when I uh, realized it's all software, you know, like, and there's no reason not to include it in like every camera, you know, like, but uh, Sony is not perfect, you know, like, it does it does five shots, but only by 0.7 increments, which is completely renders it useless. Yeah, there's no point, you know. Like, so I have to use now. I use like um, okay, like uh, but you can do three exposures uh, um, uh, by one, two, or three plus one, two, uh, two or three. So it gives you some flexibility. So. Three exposures covers pro uh, probably 70% of my needs, you know, like, so I can do like minus one, plus one, or minus two, plus two. That's, but when it's complex, so I do manual, I uh, use like uh, plus uh, three, minus three, and then, then I use like exposure compensation uh, and uh, three more shots. So I get like six shots and it pretty much covers like entire like range. Yeah, exactly. I, I sometimes, sometimes I do the same. So for for people who want to, to understand more about this, let me say if I explain this correctly, what you would do like you want to say six shots. So that would be like from uh, uh, you you switch your exposure compensation say to minus two, and you minus one normally, yeah, 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 or minus or one. Minus two doesn't matter, yeah. Yeah, you take three bracketed shots sure. at. Minus two, minus one, zero, and then you your exposure compensation plus two, and that would give you plus one, plus two, and plus three. Yeah, yeah. Good. So, um, can can you can we see your face again? Oh, stop sharing. Okay. Well, I wanted to, to ask you uh, about what what is your main outlet for your photography. Do you publish everything on the web, uh, your website, Flickr, 500px, or do you do a lot of prints? Do you work for anyone, magazines, or, or anything like that? Uh, uh, I'm online guy, you know, you know, like in general, you know, like and. Um, I, I did a lot of the different type of design, including web design. And at some point, when like uh, web b became like complex, you know, like my uh, clients started to ask me like marketing questions, you know. Like so, I started to ch teach them like marketing, you know, like online marketing, how to like search engine optimization and all this stuff, social media, how to incorporate. And at some point, I realized why don't I use for myself for my photography? So I kind of combine, you know, like all together, you know, like and. Uh, now I'm um, uh, like uh, the result is my blog, you know. Like so, uh, I do pretty much everything online. 
50 px yeah i love 50 px it's a uh, source of um, inspiration you know like and i uh, led the uh, photo walk for 50 uh, 500 px in montreal last year uh, but um, uh, google plus is probably my favorite you know like platform you know like, it's like we're all photographers all the quality and all the functionality you know like so and uh, uh, Facebook is necessary evil, you know, like so. Yeah, I feel, I feel pretty much the same in, in this respect. Yeah. And, and yeah, again, I would recommend everyone to check check out your website, phototraces.com, that I discovered recently. Mm-hmm. And it, it's really well done. And that's, uh, as you said, uh, the social media marketing or digital marketing that you employ there in a good sense because sometimes people think that marketing is like photographers tend to think that marketing sometimes is like a dirty word some photographer I'm doing art I don't care about marketing I don't want you to push in order to to sell, to sell stuff and, uh, and sound pushy or or excessively commercial but I, I think that's a, that's a mistake I, I, I think you will agree with me you know, like to prove your point, you know, like uh, um, I'm looking your web- on your website and I saw a reference to uh, interview the guy from Florida who photographs only like um, Everglades, right? Mm-hmm. And only one place and he only sells, you know, like I'm making a good living, you know, like... Uh, like photographing one place, you know, like and only like selling prints in Florida. It's amazing, you know, like so. Is this like good marketing? Yeah, that that, that was. Uh, uh, I think you're referring to the interview that I shared with, uh, done by my friends at visualwilderness.com, Jay and Valerina. I was really, really, really like surprised and impressed, you know, like they shared this interview specific with niche, you know, like. Mm-hmm. With Paul Marcellini, who is a Florida photographer, and he has this profitable niche. That it, it works because they selling local. You you need to sell images that somehow people can relate to, and people who go to the Everglades will want to see and buy pictures from the Everglades, not want to buy pictures from Canada. Well, sometimes they might. If you have a great photo of the Rockies, that will be, mm-hmm. might sell everywhere, but it's easier to, to sell what, what is local because people will will be reminded of uh, of a place they visited and they want to, to bring that home with them instead of a postcard they want a nice print to, to hang on the wall sure um, so yeah you are uh, I think you have a lot of success in terms of number of followers to, and you do a lot of tutorials and I think they're they're free so uh, you, you're doing a great service to the to the community for, to people who want to learn with your reviews and your and your tutorials. So. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I, thank you you know, like my approach, you know, like I'm trying to give people what I uh, I was missing when I started. You know, like because like ten years ago, it was like uh, much more difficult to find like uh, good tutorials. You know, like so. So what what. What does the future hold for Victor Elizabeth? What are your plans? Uh, Yeah, in near future, I'm like plotting new trip. You know, like to again to Phoenix. We'll see. So I want to do more um, Yosemite and like uh, around. You know, so want to like see new places and. well, if you if you ever decide to come back, just just let me know. That there are some great places here. Too. Oh, definitely, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, but uh, yeah, the, the I I love the the American West too. It's, it's just a, a great place for for photography, for landscape photography that you would never want to to come back home. It's just not like many other places. So I'm I'm already missing. Uh, views that I got when I was in, like in Utah one year ago. Excellent. So, any other thing that you want our audience to to know about you? No, no, not really. You know, like 
Just, you know, like uh, if you, anybody interested, just connect with, connect with me on Google Plus. Plus, it's, it's like uh, the best place, you know, like to learn, you know, like to share. I think we, we got in touch some time ago on Ello. Do you still use Ello? Uh, not really, you know, like so. Okay, okay. So like like many people, they started using it. No, no, I know, like, if you notice, you know, like, I compile interesting lists of, like, best travel and landscape photographers, you know, like, on Ella, and it was, like, 120 names, probably, you know, like, like all great people, great photography, but, you know, like, then, you know, like, one month later, you know, like, I started to check the profiles, you know, like, and nobody's using it, you know, like, it's kind of... Mm -hmm. uh, Yep, and you and you have to go back to the necessary evil of Facebook, like you, like you said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So, so tell us again what the address of your website, where people can go find you. Yeah, it's uh, phototraces.com. So all information is there. You know, like. Um, so. Okay. So I, I would like to thank you for being with us today. And uh, hope this uh, interview will be appreciated by our audience. It was really, really interesting. So, thanks again. Thank you. Thanks a lot for having Bye. me. Bye. Okay, bye.